Hi, welcome to our home kitchen. Today, I'm gonna to make some butternut squash and apple soup. It's a very simple soup, um, so let's get started. So for tools and equipment, there's not a lot that we actually need today because it's a roasted butternut squash and apple soup. We're gonna need a, something to roast our vegetables on. So I have a sheet pan here with a piece of parchment on it. Um, our chef's knife, a spoon to scoop the seeds out of the squash, pot to make the soup in. And later on, um, we're gonna need something to puree our soup with, but we'll talk more about that later. So the trickiest part of the soup today is gonna to be um, actually cutting the butternut squash. They can be a little tricky, but they're not that hard. There's several ways to do it. I'll show you what works best for me, but you can do it however you like. Some people, they just like to cut the squash right in half and you can roast it whole and then scoop the insides out. I don't like doing that so much. Um, I find you don't get as much roasted flavor because there's not as much surface area on the squash. And also I just don't like cutting squashes in half. I find it kind of a pain. So what I do is I'll just cut the top and the bottom off. And then where the long part kind of meets the rounded part is where the seeds are in the bottom. And I like to cut it there also. So once we have two pieces, then you can peel the skin off the outside. You can use a vegetable peeler, but I find with the squash, the skin's kind of thick and there's a kind of a layer underneath that you want to take off also. So I find it easier just to do it with my chef's knife and just peel, peel it like this. You take a little bit more of the squash, but that's okay because you want to take that off anyways because there's these green lines underneath that I'm trying to get rid of. I've heard that they're bitter. I've never experienced that, but that could be a thing. So I just cut the skin off with my chef's knife. The top part's the easy part because it's more lax. So there's that part. Doesn't take too long. And then, same on the bottom, you just peel kind of around the rounded part. Just take that skin off. Sometimes there's some imperfections on the outside of the squash too that you'd want to take off. Once you get the skin off of there, then you cut it in half, and then you have your seeds. So I just take a spoon and I just scoop these out. Perfect. And from there, we have a clean butternut squash, so you just cut it up into chunks. Now I'm just going to put my pieces over onto my sheet tray. And cut the top. And just cut it into cubes. And that's that. So I have a second butternut squash here that I chopped up earlier. I'm just gonna put it on a second sheet tray. Um, if you just had one squash, you would only need to use one. And then I have the rest of my ingredients here. Um, I cut them up earlier. I have some celery, some carrots, and onions. So your traditional mirepoix. Um, this isn't so much a recipe as a, as, as a method to making a soup. You can actually put whatever you want in it. Traditionally, what you do for your mirepoix is you do um, one part carrot, one part celery, two parts onion. If you want more or less of anything, you can you can do it however you want. You don't even need to use butternut squash. If you like sweet potatoes, you could use sweet potatoes, any other kind of squash. If you had like a pie pumpkin, you, you can use whatever you like or whatever you have or whatever's on sale because it, it, it will work out very, very similar. So I have a couple apples that I cut up here. Um, today we have gala apples, but it could be any type of apple. I'm just going to kind of split them between my two sheet trays here and just that it roasts more evenly, it'll get more evenly browned. I have a couple cloves of garlic and some onions and some carrots and some celery. So I'm just going to sprinkle them evenly over top of my squash here, just that it all roasts together. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of vegetable oil before I put them in the oven, which is preheated now to 400 degrees. So I just have some vegetable oil here. I'm just going to spray some over top of all my vegetables. 
I'd say maybe a tablespoon of oil to, per tray. And then I'm just gonna put some salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna mix them together. I'm gonna use my hands. If you don't wanna get all covered in oil, you can use a pair of tongs. That's fine. go these are ready to go in the oven okay so we'll just pop these in the oven at 400 they'll probably take about 30 minutes and we'll just give them a mix after every 15 minutes just to make sure they get evenly brown all right so we have everything roasted up here um, took it out of the oven I'm just gonna put it in my big pot here Now at this point, if you didn't want to put it in a pot, if you have a slow cooker and you like to do that, you could throw it all in there and just let it hang out for the day if that's what you want. But we don't have that. We're just going to throw it in the pot. So I'm just going to add all our vegetables in here. They got lots of nice color. Perfect. And now I have some spices. I have some cinnamon, some nutmeg, some ginger, some cloves, and... Yeah, so I, I have a teaspoon of each here, aside from cloves and nutmeg, which I have a quarter teaspoon. And I'm just gonna mix that onto the vegetables here. And then I have some stock. I have chicken stock. If you wanna keep it vegetarian, you can use vegetable stock. My chicken stock here is homemade, but if you have to use the boxed one, that's fine too. So I'm just going to add that over my vegetables here. It's a little frozen still, but that's okay. And I'm just going to put it on like medium heat just to come up to temperature. And then once it comes up to a simmer, I'm just going to lower the temperature and just let it simmer for probably like at least a half an hour, but it can go really as long as you want. It can go for a couple hours. It'd be even better. And yeah, so we'll just let that go and we'll come back later to puree it. So our soup's been simmering for probably about an hour or so, and it's time for the secret. And here it is. It's a high-powered blender. That's the, that's the secret that restaurants use to get their soup super smooth and creamy. Yeah, the secret is butter and cream too. We do use a lot of that, and, and that'll come later. But the, the main secret is to use a high-powered blender to, to get you the smoothest, creamiest soup. If you all you have is a hand blender or a food processor even, you can use those. The texture is just not quite the same. So what we're gonna be doing today is using our Vitamix to puree our soup. I'm gonna to have to do it in a couple batches. Um, something to be um, careful of when you're pureeing soup in a blender is to not fill it full, especially when it's hot because it can like, expand and the steam will push the lid off and you'll have a big mess and it's not a good time. Okay, so let's fill her up here. I'm gonna go about half full. I'm gonna to have to do probably two, maybe three batches. If your soup's too thick, you can always add a little bit more stock or a little bit more water. We may end up having to do that. It looks like it might be a little thick, but it's to your taste too, whatever you prefer. So I rinsed out my pot just because there's sometimes some residual chunks and not super smooth stuff. We went to all the work of pureeing it nicely. So I just like to give it a quick rinse just to make sure we get it all smooth. And I'll just scrape it all back in the pot here. So at this point, what we'll do is we'll put it back on the stove. We'll add our cream and we'll just adjust the seasoning, make sure it's perfect and it'll be ready to eat. So I have my soup back on the stove here. What I did is I rinsed out my blender jug with, it was probably about a cup of water and just ran it to clean it out and then added that back to my soup, which was good because it was a little thick and needed thinned out a bit. And we'll just add a little bit more salt. I gave it a little taste. It's a little under seasoned. 
And then I'm gonna add some cream. I have 35% cream. I'm gonna add probably to this amount of soup a half a cup or so. If you used a hand blender, at this point you may want to add a little extra cream in order to get the, the creaminess. The blender helps a lot, but if you don't have the blender, you add the cream and it turns out well. And you can just let this come up to another simmer, maybe five minutes and you're, you're ready to eat. I'm just going to give it a quick taste here and see if it's perfect. Mm, it is really good. All right, so here we have a, a um, restaurant quality roasted butternut squash and apple soup. Um, do you add anything interesting to your butternut squash soup? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> if you found this video helpful, leave us a like and consider subscribing for more videos in the future. But until next time, Mr. Pippin's in the video again!